remembering those things you were delivered from. Hello? Hello. The, maybe it might be even some things, some hardship you want in your life. Sister Margaret, you might have a few things you went through in your life that you survived. And not only did you survive, but you grew through it. Yeah. And then again, some of those things in your past, he don't take them away from you. He don't. You, he forgives you for things, but he don't take it away. He leaves it there for you to remind you not to do it again. The other thing that has to happen, and this is actually this is part of um, uh, the the teaching that we've done in several different sessions, uh, how uh, praying to make a difference, also in our intercession, uh, and one of the things that we find is that uh, when we start looking at our past, what it, I'll say this invariably, I'm going to ask. If you, if you come and you share some burden, for something that, that, you know, during your past, eventually I'll get around to asking you, and I've asked you, I've asked, I've asked several of you here uh, that I can remember, you know, have you ever thought about where Jesus was during those times of your past struggles? Whether you were, the, listen, whether you were the one that was the problem or whether there was <laughs> someone else. Mine was mostly me because I wasn't walking with him. They, and then there was a purpose in that. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. What if you had been walking with them and you still went through it? The whole the thing oh, is, what has to happen, we need to get to a place where we can start seeing ourselves through God's eyes. That's scary. We have to start mm -hmm. seeing ourselves. If Go back to what I said in the opening statements. What if you were called out? What, regardless of whether it was God or someone else who really loves you, in Jesus' name. Because we want to resist. We want to resist. And I, I'll just tell you as a pastor, that's what I, I come up against. I come up against resistance. You, do, you really don't want to have solid counsel. You don't want it. And until you want it, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. what's this? Yeah. A heart that, what, what? That, it is what? A heart that follows you so that sin will not come in. A heart that's undivided, one you rule and reign. When you have that kind of a heart, a heart that's not divided, here's what happens. We are divided. Our heart is divided by the things but all these things, troubles about temptation, about sickness, about things of the past, our heart is divided and we, 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 we seem to have this, um, what do they call it, morbid something. Anyway, we, we fixate like on these things. Like, Say it again? Morbid mentality. That's it, a morbid mentality. <coughs> I'm saying morbid curiosity. And sometimes a morbid curiosity. No, I don't. <laughs> That's true. So Jesus nailed it to the cross, and the whole purpose, and you know what, I thought it was going to go sooner, faster. We, we did have good prayer. Did we have good prayer this morning? Man, I'll tell you what, God moved in such a way. I, I, uh, I got, we got done praying, and I thought, uh, kind of, I could have gone longer. Then I realized we'd gone for 20 minutes. 20 minutes praying. Wow. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize until after it was over that we had gone that long. Didn't seem that long to me. No, it didn't, did it? No. Did you? I mean, think about it. Have you ever been there? You know, you, you get to a point where you start really start praying and being with the Lord, and suddenly it's like, time flies. Yeah, it does. Wait a minute. Think about this. Have you ever been someplace with somebody that you really just, just love to be with? You, oh, would you look at the time? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We got we got to go already. Can't we just do this? Can we just continue? See, that's what it should be like with the Lord. Think about this, because what, what in one sense, and then we're going to watch this video and see if we can learn something. But um, uh, what, what's the Bible say in, in regards to how God sees time? I think something might be wrong. He does. Well, something no, no. like a day is as as a thousand oh, okay. years or something. Yeah. yeah, a day is as a, a year, and a years as a, a wow. Wait a minute. Now, if you if you think about this, sometimes you might think, 
All right, Lord, does it really seem like it, uh, one day with me is that long? <laughs> that means our 20 minutes of prayer in our time would be like one second, maybe. Yeah, just a, just a, if that. Yeah, but let's right. flip it the other way. But the second is the shortest. We I want to spend to more time. How how do long it. do you want to spend with the Lord? says that one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as, <clears throat> as one day. Yeah. So that 20 minutes this morning was at least a couple hundred years, right? <laughs> no. Nope. I mean, no. but we mm -hmm. want that. When you, I, I just want to spend that much time with him. Mm -hmm. There's a series I'm watching right now on, um, on Netflix and uh, uh, Morgan Freeman. Yeah, with who? Morgan, Morgan Freeman? Morgan Freeman. What's it called? Something about God. Oh, something about God. Okay. <laughs> she wasn't watching. I was. But uh, it's about finding God. And actually, he's talking about the afterlife. And he's all these things. And um, how many of you hope that there's an eternity you get to spend with the Lord? Oh, yeah. Here, here's the thing. How many? Wait. Uh, table one. How many How many you want to spend eternity with the Lord? Oh, yeah. I do. Sure. Table number two. Eternity with, with the Lord? Yeah. Amen. What? Amen. What? Amen. I got one. Amen. I got one more. Come on. Look at Yeah, I'd like to spend eternity. Come on. Now, right, table number three. How many would like to spend eternity with the Lord? I would be. All right. How about over here? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm driving Wait, for. Wait, this, listen. How many of you want to spend eternity with your with the Lord, everybody? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yes. I want to spend eternity with him. Yeah. Yeah, I like. Yeah, I think I might like. Yeah, that would be nice. What? That's quit being like this. <laughs> Another meaning for that word is so be it. So think about this. Quit being like that. Mm -hmm. You should get excited about spending eternity with the mm -hmm. Lord. And mm -hmm. can I tell you when eternity started? Long time ago. Before that. Before that, eternity had no beginning. No. However, we're, we need to pick up where we are and begin walking with him now. Amen. You know, maybe maybe that's a, maybe this is a problem. Okay, maybe how many how many of you had a mom or well, it's, there was some some I'll say an adult when you were a child who said told you don't talk to strangers. Mm. Anybody? Yep. Wow. Yeah. You? you? How about you? Did, did we ever talk to strangers? I told my I, I can't kids. hear you. Yes, my father told me. Oh, William, were you, ever, were, were you raised not to talk to strangers? Nope. Man, oh man, oh man. How about you, Sister Linda? Oh, yeah, and I taught my own daughters not to talk. Don't talk to strangers. You know, the problem is, many of us, we're not talking to strangers. His name is God. <laughs> Sorry, he's not a stranger. But how many think that maybe he should be a friend that sticks closer than a brother? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's not. It, it, mm -hmm. it, well, hold on. You ready? For, I'm gonna I'm gonna say something, and you guys are really good about finishing it. And make sure you finish, give me a big finish. It's not about a religion. It's a relationship. relationship. It's not about religion. It's about a relationship. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. All, right. All right. Well, let's watch this video. Um, get it queued up here. There we go. Oh, wasn't it beautiful? Uh, a little over 20 minutes. Can you guys give me 20 minutes? Sure. Yep. Humbling yourself is not groveling. It's not enabling. Jesus like, not all of you are clean. Here, I'm not, I'm not living under any illusions here. It's not groveling, it's not enabling. And then this, this, this is convicting. It's, it's not manipulating. It's not like, hey everybody, let me tell you how many people's feet I washed this week. Let me tell you how many hard phone calls I had to make and humble myself. And let me tell you about how that was handled and, and, and you know, using your act of humility. Hey, I called mom yesterday and I humbled myself and you can't believe how she acted. 
that's manipulating. That's not humbling. That's using an act of humility to gain an advantage. Jesus didn't turn to Judas and say, well, now that I've washed your feet, maybe you should kind of rethink your 30 pieces of silver move. Your pockets are kind of bulging there. You don't see that. You see him humble himself and let things play out as they play out. I wrote this down because it's what the Lord was speaking to me about. Maybe it would be helpful to you too. You know you humbled yourself for the wrong reasons if you quickly revert to pride when you don't get the result that you wanted. This is so bogus, this humbling yourself. I tried that. I tried that. It didn't work. I'm going back to my old way. There's more work to be done there, isn't there? Don't pretend, but humble yourself. And then this, set the example. Set the example, humble yourself. That's what Jesus did. Verse 12, when he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, do you understand what I've done to you? Now, I have to say that I really like that. When was the last time we saw the word understand? Look at your Bible. When was the last time we saw the word understand? See that? It's in verse 7 when Jesus was washing Peter's feet. He's like, you're not going to wash my feet. Well, hey, hey, what I'm doing you don't understand now. You're going to understand afterward. Now, in my life, look up here for a second. In my life, you're going to understand afterwards means in a few months or a few years or in heaven. Um, would you agree with that? I've seen God explain some things to me five years later, ten years later. Why did you let us go through that, Lord? And, and usually it takes a pretty long time to get that look-back perspective. Now I get what God was doing. How many people agree that seems like a long time before that happens? Well, this is pretty encouraging to me because in this instance, it was like about four minutes. He's, he wasn't saying you'll know in heaven. He wasn't saying you're going to know in a year. He's going to say, just let me finish washing your feet and I'll tell you. I like that a lot. And I want to lean in and listen. Maybe the Lord will tell us even sooner why he's doing what he's doing in whatever's on your heart today. What I'm doing, you don't understand, verse 7, verse 12. Do you understand what I've done to you? I don't know. Can you explain it? Yeah. Here it comes. You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. Well, that's not what I thought was coming. What I thought was coming was, if I, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you call me Lord and Teacher, because I am. Your Lord. I'm your Lord. You call me Teacher, because I'm your Teacher. Jesus said, this is what I do. I'm your Lord. I'm your Teacher. You call me that. And it's good that you do, because it's what I am. And I washed your feet. If I can wash your feet, surely you can, what do you think he's going to say? I thought he'd be saying you can wash my feet. Only one person here still has dirty feet. Surely if I've washed your feet, you can wash. He takes the humility to like a whole nother level. He doesn't even mention his own feet. Which to me, um, the servant often gets lost in the service and is never acknowledged or appreciated and that's part of being a servant another place jesus says if you're ever thanked or appreciated for being a servant just say i am his unprofitable servant i only did what was my duty to do maybe you prepared some meals this week and maybe the thought crossed your mind man it's just not appreciated they're all going to be sitting in there this afternoon watching the game, and I'm going to be buzzing around making sure that this thing's good for them. Or maybe you brought home another paycheck this week, and people seem to spend it up kind of frivolously sometimes and not really realize how hard it is to put food on the table and this family. You know where I go to work every day. I don't love my job, but I love this family. And, and it's when you're serving, just kind of get this into your mind. The servant gets lost in the service and is often not. I, we don't even know if Jesus got his feet washed. It's not even mentioned. 
It's, it's astounding, really. I'd like to have a little some time guessing, but we're just don't wait for common speculation. We just don't know. And I would say that's servant, serving at its best. Will the servant be appreciated? <laughs> you just, we just don't know. But that's part of humbling yourself, is letting go of your expectation that people will see what it's costing you and thank you. Just let go of that. And, and I'm his unprofitable servant. I have only done what was my duty to do. That was a great spot for an amen. See, that's who we really are. So, um, set the example and humble yourself. Jesus quietly finished, quietly dressed, and said, I have given you an example, verse 15, that you also should do just as I have done to you. Now, this is kind of debated in the church. This is kind of debated. Some churches, like, see, he said he left us an example. And, and, and in some churches still to this day, uh, they have foot washing like an ordinance, like how we think about the Lord's table or baptism. The, 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 the picture matters, and the death in baptism, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus, we don't mess with that. We don't do that five different ways. There's no spray and wash. It's the picture matters. The picture matters, right, in baptism. Same with the Lord's table. We have fruit of the vine, and I don't want to argue wine or grape juice, but we have fruit of the vine, and we have unleavened bread. The pictures matter. We don't mess with the pictures. The pictures matter. And some people want to add foot washing as a third ordinance. And, you know, in that church, I would wear slip-ons every week because you're going to, you know, when you get there, sh shoes are coming off, feet are coming off, and some guy's going to wash my feet. Now, I don't want to make fun of people who do that. I don't want to make you laugh about it. Some people do that very earnestly, and they're like, Jesus left us an example. He wants us to do this. You know, that can get a little crazy. You start cursing fig trees. It's like, everything he did, we're doing it too. But there's another extreme that to me is more dangerous. I would be more concerned, I would be less concerned about us washing each other's feet than I would be concerned about being in a church where we think that it's you know, just some sentimental thing and that we're not actually supposed to humble ourselves before each other. We're supposed to actually do this. We're supposed to humble ourselves in front of each other. We're supposed to apologize when we're wrong. We're supposed to take the lower place. We're supposed to think more highly of our brothers and sisters than we think of ourselves. This is really in the Bible and it really matters and he has given an example and we're supposed to do it. Comments? It's all true. It's all true. Any meaning? Any anything that jumps out at you? You're supposed to serve. Huh. Don't be shy. Any area, okay, uh, let's, and, let's get personal. Any areas in your life that maybe you might need to be looking at changing? <laughs> you guys got it? You've arrived. You got it all made. No. 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 Mm -hmm. Everybody needs mm -hmm. changes. Let's pick, something, let's pick something a little bit lightweight, okay? What might be something in your life that you need to look on cha at, at changing? Oh, I see myself. I see yourself. You're not Elvis. Oh, the no, king. No, no, no. no oh. No. <laughs> How do you see yourself? Mm, probably more higher than I should. Okay. Anybody else? What do we? What needs to change? I need. I need to get past of being more fearful about stepping out. Yeah, and doubting myself. You, you, I, I just so you know, you've made strides. Do you, you think you need to do more? I do. Hmm. Major, major strides, by, by the way, right, Brother William? Yes. But still, she says she needs to do more. That does that make you nervous, William? <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah. I need to try to do what I'm supposed to do more. Do do what you're supposed to do, more of it. It gives us all a job. Yeah. 
And sometimes we get lazy on the job. <laughs> or just don't show up. <laughs> no, Here, I'm you. Do what you're supposed to. I need to put, uh, the things that I put off, I need to quicken to do them now instead of, like the word I used last week, procrastinating. Yep. Stop and procrastinating. I need to do it when I think about it rather than putting it off till tomorrow. Anybody the good, else? The good things that Christ would do, that he would want me to do. Well, the good things could be just about anything. Mm -hmm. And it might be things that Christ wants you to do, just about anything. Yes. I used to think the bad things were from Satan, which I believe they are. And they could be of the flesh, too. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's kind of subjective, right? Whether it's good or bad. Because yes. Paul said nothing of itself is... Yeah. So nothing of itself is bad. Right? Yes. How many think food is good? Especially when it's good food. Yes. <laughs> you eat too much, it's not good for you. Yeah. But, yeah, but don't let your belly be God. Yeah. Or your taste buds. or it Causes your sugar to go up. But the thing is, is that, you know, not all, not, not is food always bad, but even, even, even too much of that good food just can be bad. Amen. Yeah. Yes. It can make you be bigger than you ought to be. <laughs> <laughs> make your blood pressure go up. All kinds of things like things. that. A person can be a glutton in many areas. Which basically comes from the desires of our heart. And here's the thing. He wants you to have a new heart. So here, but for me, I'll, I, I, I find some sense of accomplishment. Maybe a lot of times what I'm doing, especially on Sunday nights, is I'm looking, I'm, I'm looking for you to punch my card, I guess. Yeah. Was the effort worth it? Mm -hmm. I'm, um, whether we've got uh, 10 or whether we've got four times that, we've got 40 or 50, I'm going to give it my all. Anyway, mm -hmm. if there's only one person, I'm going to give it just as mm -hmm. much effort. Isn't that way it should be? But you're also having 